Let me start. Uh, my name's Aubrey Dory, and I want to welcome you to the Dynamic Coalition on Schools and Internet Governance session. Uh, we have a fairly full agenda. We don't quite have everybody in the room yet, but we can get started. Uh, so the first thing uh, is, let me just go through the agenda that we've got. We've got two moderators. We've got Satish and we've got Olga, who will be joining us. Um, I'm not sure if we have any of our report reporters in the room, uh, but, but we'll take care of that. Um, we have basically, there's three sections in this. In the first one, we'll be talking about schools and we'll invite Satish and Olga, we'll invite new speakers, to, to people that have new schools to come up. What we had showing before and hopefully can keep showing for a little while is that single slide from many of the schools that we're not going to invite to speak a lot about their schools, but just to have their slides appearing for, for a short bit of time. Um, then we'll have a second section where we'll basically take three of the SDGs and we'll have presentations on those SDGs in terms of what our various schools doing in them. And then finally, we'll have a discussion with what time we have left of what the Dynamic Coalition on Schools would like to do. So with that, I'd like to pass it to you, Satish, to sort of go into the introduction of the schools and, and, and such. Thanks. Uh, thanks very much, Abri. I'm Satish, and uh, I'm based out of India, part of the ICANN at large, and also I'm associated with two schools. One, first one is the Asia Pacific School on Internet Governance, which was founded in 2015. The second one is the India School, which was founded in 2016. So we have a bunch of slides on different schools. We can quickly run through them. We don't want to kind of uh, we don't want to kind of stop and present each. Can you advance to the next one? This, this first slide is about the African School on Internet Governance. Next, please. This is the Asia Pacific School. As I mentioned, it was founded in 2015, and we are planning this year's edition in Manila uh, in November. Next. This is Argentina SIG. Uh, as you can see, Olga is unfortunately not here, uh, but she is the one that uh, you know is part of this. Next. This is the Armenian SIG. Armenia has also been having uh, quite continuously, actually, uh, their SIGs. Next, the Chad SIG. Uh, we have a representative from uh, Chad, so later on in the interaction, we can speak about it if you want to highlight anything. Next, Ghana. Anybody from Ghana school here? No, nobody's from. Uh, sorry? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, next. This is the European Summer School. I am myself an alumni, and Sandra is here from uh, the Eurosic. Next. This is India School, uh, founded in 2016. A couple of weeks back, we had the eighth edition uh, in India. Next. NASIG. Uh, NASIG is uh, uh, a school, a North American school, uh, set up by the ICANN community at large people, uh, Glenn and others. I don't think there's anybody, anybody here from uh, that school here. Next. This is a Nigerian school on internet governance. Is anybody here from Nigeria or the school? Uh, no. Next. Pakistan. We have Akaz here from Pakistan, uh, the PK, uh, PK SIG uh, from 2015. One of the earliest uh, schools in uh, Asia Pacific and certainly in South Asia, the first in South Asia. Next. The Russian school on uh, summer school on internet governance, St. Petersburg University. Next. This is. Uh, South School, oh, Olga School. So uh, this is uh, one of the oldest again uh, in, in the world, actually. This is Sri Lanka IGF, which also doubles as a uh, SIG. So it's a kind of combined uh, structure. Next. Virtual School. This is set up by, again, Glenn McKnight and Alfredo, uh, who are part of uh, the ICANN community. And when the COVID uh, shutdown came up, this was their response to uh, the shutdown. And it is now continuing as a virtual school. Next. Chad, second time it's coming, I think. <laughs> That's it? So these are the schools that we uh, have <laughs> have in this uh, slide set, slide deck. Are there anybody from any other school not mentioned so far? If so, we can quickly introduce yourself. Yeah. The fun is coming. Uh, 
Okay, uh, I'm from Benin and from Benin, uh, Benin. school and senate governor. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for that. Uh, this is from Benin. We have one more school which is brand new, and Avery is going to introduce that school. I'm actually going to invite uh, an introduction to that school. And Tadashi, if you would like to. I don't know if you could hear me. Would you like to introduce the, the new Japan school? While we're talking about it, let me talk about an event that they had. Uh, KCG this year, just before this meeting started, had basically a whole day session where there was a youth session and they introduced, uh, you know, uh, they, they basically had a session of the school. And, um, and, and uh, it was really quite, a, quite an interesting uh, day in terms of the students and, and having sessions and such. Would you like to actually come and introduce the, the, the new school that you're doing in Japan, this, the Japan School? Thank you, Uri. Uh, my name is Toshi from Japan uh, School of Direct Governance. Uh, we start this spring. Uh, last year, uh, I met her at the Ethiopia uh, Addis Ababa the IGF last one. So uh, I know I was slightly about uh, school of internet governance, but uh, what is the internet uh, school of internet governance? Uh, what is the use I just very confused. So, <coughs> but uh, at that time I uh, find what it found that what is uh, school of internet governance. Then, so the in 2018 uh, we have a big discussion about uh, uh, manga pirate site. Probably you may know the at the IGF village there's a big booth about that the pirate site. So, <coughs> then. Uh, uh, in 2019, I uh, started to uh, teach in the university, talk about uh, a pilot site and internet governance. So <coughs> I also, uh, uh, I'm a professor in the Kyoto. So then uh, I start again uh, this year uh, about uh, the, uh, how can I say, uh, internet governance. So then <coughs> uh, I'm very happy to uh, many of you to Kyoto, and I hope that uh, we have uh, uh, again, a promotion of the school internet governance and uh, uh, exchange the for more information and help us. Thank you. Thank you very much, and uh, quite looking forward. So back to you. I don't know if there are any other new schools here that want to introduce yeah, themselves I'll before we move on. So I'd like to ask uh, anybody who's online whether they represent any schools of internet governance schools on internet governance if they if there are some if there is someone then please raise your hands i don't see any hands so i'm assuming that uh, so we have quickly gone through the slides but towards the end of the session we have some discussion time we have olga our uh, moderator who's coming up just now uh, so we have time at the end of the session to discuss So back to you, Abhi, this is this pre-gathering. Thank you. So yeah, give, you a ch give yourself a chance to, to breathe. But we basically have gone through the new schools, invited new schools, the, the new Japan school discussed a little bit. I talked a little bit about the event that occurred earlier this week at KCG. And we're now at the point where we're going to talk about uh, SDGs and schools, and that's good that we're giving this a fair amount of time. We're going to have three of the SDGs are going to be discussed. Uh, the first one, and I'll just start this, the first one will be on SDG 5 on gender, the second SDG 7 on energy, and the third SDG 16 on peace, justice, and strong institutions. Um, so. I don't know, Olga, if you wanted to introduce the, the whole theme more than I just did. Uh, w one of the purposes of this session is to, in, to try to find linkages in between what we do at the different schools of internet governance 
and the sustainable development goals. Um, there are some, uh, some of the activities, uh, I would say that several of the activities that we do with the schools in, in different focuses of training are totally related with the different SDGs. So this is why um, Sandra, myself, I, I don't know if we have other colleagues talking about different SDGs. We would like to explain some of the activities that we do in relation with these SDGs and uh, perhaps some other schools that are in the in the room could maybe jump up and, and share some other activities that are related with this issue. Uh, Sandra, would you like to go to the gender issue? And then I will follow with the uh, energy. Yes, um, thank you very much. Welcome everyone, my name is Sandra Hoferichter. I'm the organizer of the European Summer School on Internet Governance, which is a global school other than the name suggests the euro just comes from the fact that we are based in Europe, but we are inviting globally, and I'm proud to say that uh, we were the first school on internet governance, and it's really amazing to see how many schools evolved over the years, and um, yeah, how this became a movement with a, with a really greater impact. Um, speaking about impact, I would like to focus a little bit on SDG 5, which is uh, achieve gender quality and empower all women and girls. And there are several uh, uh, pr uh, um, under uh, achievements or under goals that are defined, and uh, I looked at those who are most relevant to schools on internet governance, which I believe is 5.5. Ensure women's full and effective participation and equal opportunities for leadership at all level of decision making in political, economic, and public life. I do believe that schools on internet governance uh, do contribute to this goal because um, most of the schools are not uh, only focused on youth engagement and youth participation, but indeed uh, are an opportunity for young professionals to get a holistic knowledge about internet governance, which then helps them to serve on certain boards or uh, take leadership positions in organizations that are uh, dealing with internet governance. Uh, in SDGs, usually there are also indicators mentioned that support uh, uh, or that are supporting numbers for the respective uh, uh, goal. Um, I have here a number from Germany only, the proportion of women in managerial positions in Germany in 2014, it was only 21%, and in 2018, not much progress has been made, it's only 23%. So you see there is uh, still a lot of work to do in order to get really the women into managerial positions. Same applies for women in parliament uh, or local or governments. Um, also here, little progress has been made. If, you l if I look at the numbers, it even lowered, but this is in a, in a very uh, small range, so I would not go into much detail, but it's around 30 to 40 percent of women that are in, in Germany, in uh, local governments or in parliaments, in national parliaments. But um, I want to f uh, focus a little bit on the second goal that applies to our schools, which is goal Five point B, enhance the use of enabling technology, in particular information and communications technology, to promote the empowerment of women. The respective indicator is not really related to what we are doing at our schools because it shows the proportion of individuals who own a mobile phone by sex. I think this is nothing that is relevant for us, but I think the overall goal enhance the use of enabling technology, in particular information and communications pr uh, technology to promote the empowerment of women. I do think this is really indeed the goal where the schools of internet governance should possibly in, uh, provide an indicator because here I can say, speaking from the European summer school, I can realize that over the past 10 years, the participation of women and the application rate of women is much bigger than the application and the participation rate of men. So what does it tell us? Uh, women are obviously more often willing to uh, dedicate vacation time or, or education time and travel costs or participation costs in order to participate in 
<coughs> in such a a summer course and speaking from my sorry <coughs> speaking from 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 this uh, Euro SSIG I indeed in order to have parity in our uh, classes I sometimes indeed looking for male participants that are qualified and can participate in our school this is something that might look other in different regions of the world, but I wanted to give you this uh, very uh, personal view or this very local view from the school that I'm running. But um, I have also consulted with UNESCO and um, we, we had a discussion uh, this year in, in Meissen at our school. And UNESCO numbers prove that the gap uh, at least in primary schools, have narrowed tremendously over the past years. There is still a gap remaining in adult education. And here I do believe we can pick up the qualified women that are coming from a really good uh, uh, qualification in the primary school. We can pick them up and include them in our courses. And here I do believe the schools on internet governance looking at them from a perspective of what they can contribute to the SDGs, can really do and are doing uh, a wonderful job and are creating a good opportunity for adult education, which of course then at some point should also lead to bring women into more leadership position, uh, not only in managerial, but also in parliaments and, and governments. Um, I have some resources here, so whoever is interested, I'm happy to share those. They are from, as I said, UNESCO, from Science Po uh, Paris, but also from the World Bank. Um, if you would like to have uh, some more details, I don't go into these details right now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sandra, and apologies for being late. I was confused. I thought the session was at 11, and I was running from other session this morning. My name is Olga Cavalli. I didn't present myself properly. My name is Olga Cavalli. Me and my colleague, Adrian, uh, and other colleagues from Latin America. We, we run the South School of Internet Governance. I think it was the second one in, in the history. And uh, we, it is interesting what Sandra says, that uh, after the pandemic, we, we went to a hybrid format. And now we have fellows, mainly from Latin America, which is the focus. But we have fellows from all over the world. We have a trans translation all the time between Spanish and English. And also this year, we organized it in the Northeast of Brazil, also in Portuguese. So it has become somehow global, which is, but the, the focus is, is Latin America or the Americas because it has been organized also in, in North America and in the Caribbean. About the SDG that I wanted to comment, which is number seven, um, focused on ensure access to affordable, reliable, sustainable, and modern energy for all. Access to energy is the important pillar for the well-being of people as well as for economic development and poverty alleviation. I think the schools have a major role from different perspectives related with energy. And also we have to think energy very, very much linked with climate change, which is a problem for, for several, for the whole world, but especially for developing countries that are suffering consequences perhaps happening in other parts of the world. So about uh, energy, we have uh, in, in our school, we had uh, several um, uh, panels about the impact of um, what would happen if we would achieve uh, connectivity for all. What would happen with climate change? With what would happen with the demand of, uh, of energy? Uh, so powering the internet consumed 800 terawatts uh, of electricity in 2012. 22, and it, it expected to really increase uh, this year and the, the next year. And I have some information from different resources. The energy consumption of the internet will double by 2030. So uh, the, the consume of energy is uh, will be a major issue, and the impact that it may have in climate change may be relevant for many countries, including the demand that we'll have by uh, artificial intelligence and, and other new developments uh, Internet of Things and many automatic um, I have devices all over the world. Um, there is another aspect of, of the energy, which is um, there are, it's difficult to understand or believe, but there are areas in the world that don't have electricity today. So uh, in the schools, we, um, we, we can 
talk with different stakeholders, uh, professionals from developing economies, developing countries, in trying to bridge that gap of areas that don't have electricity. Imagine having no electricity, it's, uh, it's perhaps for many of us, it's, uh, we, we cannot imagine. We were talking in Brazil with fellows from living in the Amazonian area. They don't have even roads, they only get there by boat. And the only internet that they are having today is the one by Starlink, uh, with some um, mobile uh, uh, um Starlink with, with the low Earth orbit satellites, and government is insta installing some uh, fiber optic cables through the Amazons. But some parts of, the of, the of that region don't even have electricity. So uh, the, the work that we do in the schools with in, in talking with different professionals, governments, and different stakeholders in trying to enhance the, the reach of electricity and the good use of, of electricity and the impact in climate change will be, um, it, it's very important. Also, there is a new concept called the energy, the Internet of Energy. It means the Internet of Things, but focus on energy. Focus on all the devices that uh, control and manage the uh, in, uh, energy as a critical infrastructure. Uh, so includes generation, transmission, functionality, and energ energy usage. So that is a new, uh, a new area of, of, of work that we may include in, in, uh, in the, the issues that we review in the schools. So this is what I wanted to share with you. I have some resources here also uh, about energy and climate change. If you want, I can send them to you. And maybe uh, in the audience, there are schools that could share some ideas about the sustainable development goals. Do you think that's a... Uh, we have one more speaker here. Time? We have one more speaker. Okay. And after that, oh we'll sorry open up. Uh, <laughs> please, please come. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think that Thank would you. be good. I this think after, yeah. after yeah. we finish wi okay. with Alexander, we can then see if others want to comment, either on the schools that have, I mean, the SDGs that have already been discussed, or on others. Uh, uh, hello. <coughs> uh, my, my name is Alexander Savnin, and I, uh, um, I teach uh, internet governance uh, in uh, Free Moscow University in Russia. Uh, and I would like to uh, talk about uh, SDG 16, uh, which sounds promote peaceful and inclusive societies for sustainable development, provide access to justice for all, and build effective, accountable, and inclusive institutions at all levels. So <coughs> I would like to start talking about uh, uh, how schools of internet governance could uh, help build effective, accountable, and inclusive institutions. Actually, uh, one of uh, internet governance institutions about which you have to talk at your school, it's an internet engineering task force. And this is most effective working standardization body because actually uh, if thing works, it becomes standard. If it does not work or no one needs it, it's not standard. It's, it's much more effective than uh, uh, ITU, for example. Or uh, another uh, example which we are bringing in school uh, to our students uh, at schools of internet governance is actually ICANN, which is uh, first of all uh, demonstratively inclusive uh, with different group of stakeholders, uh, different group of possibilities, and for sure it's keeping diversity, uh, which might not be enforced uh, in some societies. Uh, so. Uh, like Sandra uh, and Olga uh, from very developed countries uh, in society meanings. Uh, Russia is actually now slowly going back to previous centuries. Uh, and uh, then we have to bring this uh, uh, to our students information about how uh, governance works. Actually, we in our school, we talk not only uh, at, at about classical go internet governance institutions, we also uh, touch different bodies uh, well, classical uh, like ITU, also different NGOs uh, which uh, govern standardization of technologies or, or working with communities uh, uh, like open source community management, uh, managing uh, as um, NGOs or like Wik Wikimedia who manages a uh, well-known Wikipedia. Uh, so uh, ex such examples of uh, Inclusion and effectiveness, again, I if you are no, not in the West uh, and other stakeholder group, uh, could be really impressive. One of my students reported uh, af after um, our course that we were telling uh, like a science fiction about universities that does not exist. But anyway, if you can bring such examples in your country, uh, you can bring examples of 
such working institutions and actually people usually uh, know that internet works. You, you, you can show relations to what people see if they access internet to, to how it existed. So I, I can talk a lot of this, um, maybe just to save time, I will not uh, give exact targets of uh, this goal, but there are like 17, se oh 16, 7, 16. Dot, uh, 16 dot 8, something like which are more precise in this case. Uh, uh, also, uh, this goal is about uh, peace and promote peaceful things. For Russia is uh, very important, and I will give just one quote from uh, very favorite uh, American writer, Mark Twain. Uh, yeah. Uh, once, many years ago, where an internet have not existed, he said that travel is fatal to prejudice, bigotry, and narrow mindedness. Uh, narrow mindedness. Mindedness, sorry. Uh, and actually, all these words are a source of current wars and conflicts. Now, from many countries, young people are, are not able to travel uh, and actually be, be cured from uh, prejudice or something like this. Internet, first of all, bring us, bring us to many different places. Internet governance, demonstration to our uh, students' internet governance, shows experiences from many different countries. Uh, it allows us, uh, usually uh, schools of internet governance invites guests for from different countries, different other schools or something like. So demonstration to students that world is different, uh, world uh, is interesting, uh, that other people in the world and their activity, they are not aliens, they are just interesting, they are so interesting for you and your students are interesting for them. And uh, internet is not just source for dangerous information, but via governance, people start cooperating, understanding each other, and uh, spreading this uh, into their countries, and then that could bring peace to our planet more effectively. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. to you. Uh, Bravo. There are some hands up here. Uh, uh, th we have a mic. Maybe you yeah, can you can, you can join mic. in the mic. Hi. Um, my name is Vakas and I'm part of the team at uh, Pakistan School on Internet Governance. We last week we had our ninth edition in this seventh different city of Pakistan. So our model is a bit different. We don't, uh, we're not located at central location and invite people. We actually go to a different city every year. Um, that has its pros and cons as well. I won't go into details. Uh, but there were two SDGs that I wanted to mention, which are actually part of how we do things at six. One is 8.6 which says by 2020 substantially reduce the proportion of youth not in employment, education, or training. Uh, since we educate people, we train people about internet governance, and we also, at least in our school, we have a full-fledged session about internet for entrepreneurial uh, opportunities. So invite people who have digital initiatives that led to successful business ventures in, in the end, so just so as to you know, inspire the youth about seeing the internet as an economic uh, empowerment tool as well. Um, the second one I would like to mention is 9.5, uh, uh, sub clause 9.5C, uh, 5, 5 it would be then eventually, which says that significantly increase access to information and communication technology and strive to provide universal and affordable access to internet in these developing countries by 2020. Um, I th I'm sure many of the other schools do this as well, but we also invite uh, mobile and internet operators to the schools uh, just to provide information about their plans on going to these particular areas where we go. For example, last year we were in Gilgit, which is actually the hometown of K2. Uh, it is a mountainous area, tough terrain and all. So internet access is a big problem there. So we invited the local operators to talk to the people who were there at the school and to, and to share with them what are their plans to actually provide internet access to these areas. Um, similarly, we also invite our ministry and our regulators to come up and inform the audience about what are the plans, eventual plans, and what, are the, what is their vision uh, to provide internet access to, uh, to different areas of Pakistan. So I just wanted to mention these two SDGs which are relevant to the uh, work of our school. Interesting. You. Well, you mentioned that you rotate among cities. We do exactly the same. We organize a school every, every time in different cities uh, in, in the Americas. 
which is, as you said, uh, has good things and, and complicated things uh, because you have to start from scratch in, yes. in every in every school, but at the same time, you are more um, keen to go into different communities and different countries, and so yeah. I it's commend a, you a, for it's that. A it's a new challenge for us every year, being organizers, but it's much easier for that community yeah. to, you know, being par become yeah. part of the school. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have another. Henriette, welcome. Apologies for being late. There are also new security measures, by the way. So oh. there's you cannot go through the other <laughs> entrance, so everything took longer. Um, um, my name is Henriette Esterhuisen. I'm the organizer of the African School on Internet Governance. Uh, we've just had our 11th school. Um, it's a joint initiative of Research ICT Africa, University of Cape Town, the African Union Commission, and Association for Progressive Communications. Um, we, I, I wanted to speak to SDG 5. I know Sandra's already spoken, and I'm not sure that I, uh, that I cover, but maybe we cover it in different ways. AFRISIC is a little bit different from some of the other schools in that it's more of a leadership development uh, uh, event that targets sort of middle to senior management um, in government, in regulators, and in civil society. This year, for example, we had members of parliament. We had six members of parliament that are also here part of the UN parliamentary track. And we often have um, deputy director level, heads of regulatory agencies. So we actually target people that are active in the digital internet or ICT policy context, but that don't have a strong grasp of internet governance. Um, the way we deal with gender is that, well, firstly, we, we always have at least 50% of our participants are, are women and faculty. We really uh, emphasize having women, women presenters, women thought leaders. Um, we also actually really emphasize having African um, experts. There's a lot of training that's done in Africa, particularly by, even by the African Union. And it's done by Diplo, and Diplo does excellent work but they bring mostly presenters that are from other parts of the world. So we really try to focus on having African experts. Um, we deal with gender-based violence, so that's the one uh, SDG 5 target we address. We deal with the one on leadership development, which I think EuroSIG does also really brilliantly. I, I have the pleasure of participating in EuroSIG. And then on the one on policy. And there we focus particularly on access. And we look in quite a granular way at what conditions in African countries lead to a gender digital divide, both at the demand side and the supply side. And then at how <coughs> regulators, for example, by making universal service funds more gender aware, can actually uh, have a positive impact on that. And yeah, I can share more. And we also do evaluations. And tr I mention this every year because I think it's such a good methodology. I want to share it with the other schools. We do tracer studies where we do uh, we look back on four, five, ten years of the school and um, have independent research done on how people that were in the school have had their thinking about the multi-stakeholder process change and how it has influenced their career. We have an alumni network like Eurosig as well um, and would like to actually collaborate more with Eurosig on finding innovative ways on strength because we're quite similar in some ways. Thank you. Thank you, Henriette. More comments about the SDGs? Um, I don't think. Oh, yes, go we ahead. Do, which is a very interesting and a very difficult thing to do. We deal with LGBT issues and we try and deal with them in a very sensitive way because if we have people from, from, from African governments and regulators, but we bring them together with civil society and human rights activists. So we try and deal with some of these sensitive issues including internet shutdowns in a way where we create a trusted environment where you can actually have a conversation, not always reach consensus, but actually build better understanding of the differences of the pers per perspectives. Interesting. Thank you very much, Henriette. Um, more comments? Yeah. Uh, th thank you so much uh, for giving me this opportunity. I'm Ashrafur Rahman. I'm the coordinator of Bangladesh School of Internet Governance. Uh, but I just want to share a few uh, information about the Bangladesh SIG. Uh, we are uh, trying to making a bridge with, uh, through our school with the urban and rural people, because you know always the rural people having the behind scenario, uh, they cannot connect with the mainstream people. 
uh, I'm sorry, but uh, is it about SDGs? Because this part is about yeah, SDGs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so here is we uh, focused on the SDG 5, which is the gender quality. And I should mention uh, we are trying to including the transgender uh, communities also with uh, the SIG. And another one is SDG 9, where is the mentioned industry, innovation, and the infrastructure. Because the rural people have, uh, our rural students have lots of ideas, but they can implement uh, like the urban students or the school and college. Like. So we are trying to work on that. Thank you so much. Thanks to you. And uh, you said you're from Bangladesh? We have several Bangladesh uh, students in the school. Uh, the from since we started to become uh, hybrid and after uh, during the pandemic and after the pandemic, it's, it's very interesting. For some reason, Bangladesh is like Argentina. Maybe it's because of football, but... Uh <laughs> <laughs> yes, <okay. laughs> yeah, exactly. we, we are also a big fan of Argentina. Argentina is <laughs> also a big fan of... Uh, Good to know. Thank you. Thank you so much. If, if I can add, as part of what was going on th this week it at in, in Japan in at the Kyoto School, they gave a very extensive presentation on their school, which was really quite enlightening. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bravo. Um, more comments about SDGs. Uh, do we have someone in remote that maybe want to say something? I I I'm, I'm not in the... Is there anybody from the Zoom room that would like to make a presentation? Yeah. By the way, I do wonder whether our remote moderator is here uh, because <laughs> I haven't been following. Uh, I haven't seen them, so I'm sort of, I'm sort of doing that role. Um, He's not there. Uh, Raymond is not there online. Right. I've got, yeah, I've got one comment here, which was dynamic coalition. Actually, the, yeah, the comment no. is about ethics, whether the courses cover ethics. Right. And th that was the original comment. And mm -hmm. then we have. And then there was one that uh, robotics uh, talked about e health access in remote areas. So I'm wondering whether that, you know, the school, but it really didn't talk we'll about a school and an SGG. Mm. We'll take it up in the next part. Right. So shall okay. we move on? Yeah, sure. Uh, I don't know, Enrique, if you I want have a to question. I have a question. So to all of you, and including ourselves, who deal with the SDGs, do you deal with them explicitly? So we, for example, also deal with some of the other SDGs, like, you know, we have human rights. I'm sure uh, other schools have too. But um, do you actually, in your curriculum and in your agenda, have sessions that go over the SDG process that links it to the WISIS process? So, you know, I, I, I'm just curious. It's not something we actually do. We talk about the WISIS process, and indirectly we address SDGs, okay. but we're not directly. So that I'd like to know how you feel about that. I, if I may, in 2017, uh, the whole school uh, that we organized in Rio with the Fundación Getulio Vargas was totally focused on SDGs. At that time, we, we prepared the whole, the whole program in trying to focus on all aspects of SDG. What we do every year is we have a kind of a, a, a general focus. This year was sustainable development and generative uh, artificial intelligence. So although we go through all aspects of internet, we try to bring some experts, some, some special focus on some days on, on these issues. In 2017, we did especially focus on SDGs. But, you know, you have those issues in the program um, always, um, especially with climate change. We have uh, had several also uh, with energy, not, not all of it, but sometimes. Um, yes. Um, yeah, okay. Oh, actually, uh, in Russian Federation, all these UN processes are a bit obscure. So that's, uh, it's not very public uh, and so on. Uh, because maybe since Soviet Union, uh, we have the country at whole generally have good access to water, have good health care and something like. And then maybe government thinks that it, it should not be done and other things. Uh, and some SDGs like 9th and 16th are a bit, a bit obscure. So we have, we have uh, a separate uh, part of our course which does explaining how things are going around United Nations. Uh, we also were talking about SDGs uh, where did they get it? Ju just an informational purpose. For people, if they come to such audiences, uh, not to be wondering what SDG is, uh, why it's happening, and something like. Uh, the two schools that I'm associated with, neither of them explicitly highlight the SDGs. We have subjects and topics around them, but not directly as SDGs. The SDGs were adopted in 2015, 
at that time many schools were already running and so the curriculums were developed without looking into SDGs. But I think it's good that we are using this session in particular to see how our schools naturally address many of the SDGs and I found it very valuable also the comments from the audience what SDGs are relevant in, in which region because um, as uh, uh, Alexander said um, also in, 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 in Europe you don't read much about SDGs and I'm pretty impressed how visible the SDGs are here in Japan. You can see them in, in some windows, you can see them on, on the cars that remove the trash and um, it's, it's pretty amazing to me that there's a much greater awareness of these important goals here in Japan than I could realize uh, that is the case in, in Europe and possibly also elsewhere. So I think we could uh, pick up what Japan, Japan is doing in this regard. Uh, there is a comment uh, for uh, Vakas. Uh, this is about, uh, uh, because he mentioned the mountainous areas where internet access is poor. Uh, this DTN has been proposed as an access solution. DTN is a delayed tolerant networks. So that has been proposed, has, has come up as a comment for you. So any other SDG related discussions or interventions? Yes, please. Hi everyone, it's Bashar from Chad. So uh, th thank you for the speaker uh, about SDG. But as you know, we are doing, we contribute to SDG now is our school. Because what we are doing is good quality of education. So with this school, we teach people, we interact with them. I think that it's contributed to SDG. So SDG is not like physical persona. It's like the objective that we can help to attain like gender, so when you bring women inside and the leadership, teaching them, I think that is contribute to gender balance. When you talk about climate change, how to save energy, what uh, Olga said is very important also, because what we are doing our uh, first edition of SDG, we have problem of electricity also. So we bring a school and at, at, at the hotels to have a sustainable electricity, because when you don't have electricity, you don't have uh, projection of, uh, of slide. You don't have anything, so the school is down. So I think that everything what we are doing is linked to the to SDG. So what uh, Arya said, how we can improve that? Because the SDG, uh, it, uh, the mandate will be a start and something like this, and how we can incorporate in our agenda is very important, as she said, so we can have a workshop to use this link it to SDG, but in Africa we have agenda 2063 also, so it's linked to SDG, so how to co localize this the SDG and, uh, and grassroots. So thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. you. Um, more comments, some comments from remote, no? No, no more comments about SDGs, no? So we move to the next uh, section, so it's um, round table discussion which is not round, but it's a conceptually round table. <laughs> Until it's really hard to get a, <laughs> a real round table at these meetings. <laughs> so um, uh, how do we see schools and training in internet governance evolving? So we want to discuss with you uh, this concept and also the value of schools in reinforcing relevance of multi-stakeholder models. Um, I have some names here in, in the list, but uh, I don't know if someone wants... Yeah, sure. So, uh, like I said, uh, I am associated with two schools, and one of them is the India School. And let me share very briefly uh, what we have achieved. Uh, I mean, the primary function of a school of internet governance is <laughs> awareness building, capacity building, basically. But beyond that, that is the first deliverable. But what we have done, we have experienced, is that uh, in large countries like India, this provides a platform for people to come together from different parts onto one table. So that is actually quite an enabling thing because what the India School did was after two editions, it started incubating the India Youth IGF. Now that has just completed six years now. So that's a mature organization now. The second thing we did was we associated with the GFCE, I and mean Martin is here from GFCE, uh, and we started this GFCE IIII series of workshops. And this is a capacity building again, uh, awareness building on cybersecurity related norms and you know best practices and so on. We just two weeks back we finished the fourth edition of that workshop. So it gives us a platform to kind of take up new things. 
which otherwise cannot be taken up. Because we are getting a lot of people from different backgrounds. Uh, actually, that is the multi-stakeholder uh, system itself. In many countries, you don't have, uh, unlike Brazil, which has a kind of CGI.br, we don't have anything uh, similar to that in India and many other countries. These schools actually provide the initial part of a multi-stakeholder model. Uh, it is without any mandate. Nobody has kind of given a mandate to us. We have kind of assumed that mandate. So what India School did then was to kind of, the third part is that we pushed for the India IGF, which was not happening for the longest time. So the school itself took the initiative and pushed the government and go got everybody together. So now we are in the third year of the India IGF now. Again, that's an achievement at the school. And the another project which is going to come up as an action item, not awareness building, uh, is that we're going to start an India project measuring internet, the quality of internet. Again, that's come out of the school. So a school is not just a school. It is an actually an organization that can have much broader ramifications. So I'll stop here. Thank you, Satish. This is very interesting. I would like to share with you some evolution that uh, talking about the IG schools of internet governance evolving. Um, every we started 15 years ago. This is our 15th uh, edition. Just happened in September. And after w once we finish each school, we do a survey with the fellows and with the uh, and with the experts. And they started to ask um, information previously to the week. They, they needed more, they, they wanted to be more prepared. So now we have included uh, in the last three years a self-assisted virtual training prior to the school that it lasts uh, two months, not, not, not all the time, of course, it's three, three hours per week with videos that we have produced and material that we have produced. It's not copy paste. And, um, and then the school, and uh, what we did last year, we partnered a university. So for those students that have complied with the evaluations of the first two stages, the virtual and the hybrid, whether they are virtual or on site, they can do a research with the university and receive a university diploma the on internet governance and regulations. Um, none of these things is paid for the fellows. Everything is for free for the fellows. Uh, and uh, in the Argentina School of Internet Governance, we have partnered another university from Argentina, and we will offer this year certifications from Fortinet for, for uh, we have some, some fellows, uh, fellowships, like I, I think like 40 fellowships for, for uh, doing a certification for free in cybersecurity. So I think we are about, I think Satish said a very interesting thing that we, we uh, schools become kind of a, a vortice of, of, of activities related with internet governance at the national level. Uh, in last, uh, at the beginning of this year, we did a survey with uh, the students uh, and we produced a document for the Global Digital Compact, which is published in the Global Digital Compact. We did that with uh, more than 80 fellows from all over the world and we did that in three languages, Spanish, English and Portuguese, uh, always working online. And now with the student this year, we are working on a different document in how to enhance the multi-stakeholder model through uh, participation of fellows. Uh, I have the material, I have to work with the, with the team to do a document, but this will be in the near future. Maybe other schools would like to comment or? Okay, perfect. So we have uh, we have roughly half an hour for uh, discussion. So after which we'll have to wind up. We have several speakers already lined up. First is Olga. Would you like to go again about South School? Or yeah. you're done. We have Wolfgang here from Euro SSIG. Please, can you come over here, Wolfgang? The father of all the schools. <laughs> Applause <laughs> for the The Internet Governance Father. Thank you very much. As Wynn said yesterday, it's always suspicious if you clap your hands and you get an applause before you have said anything, <laughs> because probably I will say something which where you disagree, so but uh, which will not produce any applause. But I think the, uh, um, you know, it's always good to remember where all this comes from, and it's fantastic to see how a crazy idea has um, triggered a development where we see now so many uh, uh, schools which are inspired by the basic idea. You know, the, uh, as you remember, the World Summit uh, on the Information Society in Tunis adopted a broad definition of internet governance, which included the evolution and the use of the internet. That means the technical uh, layer, 
and the application layer, which are the so-called internet-related public policy issues. And this goes from cybersecurity to the digital economy to human rights to artificial intelligence, a lot, lot of other things. And so the problem is that internet governance is such a multidisciplinary approach which you cannot study in a regular uh, uh, university. You have to study law or um, uh, uh, political science or informatics or cultural science or something else. So that means the idea of the uh, f uh, founding fathers of this uh, summer school was to find a format which uh, would be realistic and allow this multidisciplinary presentation both from a technical and a political perspective from a practical and an academic perspective. So uh, I think this was the challenge, and uh, so the, the, the pilot project was, why not to use the format of a summer school of a one-week course? So over the years, what I think we have seen is that this is really an uh, 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 interesting format because it's very flexible. So you can adjust this to special needs, uh, special local needs, or to special target group needs, and you can have one week, or you can have a one year virtual course, so just a weekend uh, course, so, but if you follow more or less, or if you base the concept on the pro definition from the Tunis agenda, then you can pick some elements, but you are rooted in the uh, business process. I think this is also important for uh, the self-understanding of the school, that they contribute to a process which is inspired by the program of action and the principles of the World Summit on the Information Society. So, um, th for instance, the, uh, when we had the um, pre-conference here with Kyoto University, um, the Brazilian school presented its uh, model and say you know, we have weekend courses, we have, you know, full year uh, course and, and this. And you can have also courses for special target groups. So we are discussing now to have a special course for parliamentarians or for governmental officials or for judges. I think to we heard in the open plenary there was a judge from Africa who said, I'm the only judge here. So the, the, the we have the legislative, it's the government, uh, uh, the parliament, the executive is the government, but what about <laughs> this <laughs> the third uh, form of power, the judges? And a lot of conflicts in the world of tomorrow will be at least uh, then uh, go to a court. And if you have judges who have no idea what internet governance is, they probably they make stupid decisions. So, and in so far, you know, judges are an important target group and you can, uh, and that's why you know, the format is a very good one, is flexible, and that's why it's an encouragement also for uh, um, um, academics or other groups in, in, in many countries to take this as a source of inspiration. There is no single model. So we have started this in Meissen and it, it was testing out, so we are learning by doing. To if you go to our first course in uh, 2007, it's so different what we <laughs> offer today. So that means you have to be open to a changing environment. And uh, as you have seen also here, uh, issues like AI were not on the agenda uh, 10, 15 years ago, but now say, and, and, and you have new questions, how all this is related. Confusing concepts like, what is digital governance? Is this different from internet governance? Do we have AI governance, cyber governance? So that means uh, growing confusion. So and in so far, schools are important, you know, to bring more clarity to the processes that you avoid this confusion and chaos, and then we have a better, better understanding. So it's work in progress. It will never finish. As Bill Clinton something have said in a NICAN meeting, internet governance is like stumbling forward. So that means small steps are better, better than big jumps. So, but be very careful and uh, be inspired. What do you want to achieve? Uh, and, and, and what is the target group? I think these are two or three um, key questions you have to ask yourself if you start to develop a program. And feel free, so because uh, this, the, the beauty of an academic person, so uh, independence of thinking is important. So do not try to please somebody. So take your inspiration from the global community and say, 
what is good for my country, what is good for my community, and then uh, be proactive. Thank you. Thanks to you, Wolfgang. Thanks so much. Applauso. Bravo. Uh, does anybody have any question? Uh, we have Henriette that wants yeah. to okay. speak. Um, I want to speak about the evolution. Can I come and stand here? Of course, of course. You can come sit there. no perfect model. But some things I think are standing out. I think firstly there is a lot more other people. The mic is off. Other institutions that are um, delivering um, uh, training. For example, UNESCO is training judges and judiciary in internet related policy, but they're not really part of, of this network. Um, there's also quite a lot of training for regulators as well that are not a part of this network. And I think the big difference is that they, they don't emphasize the multi-stakeholder approach to the same extent. I think what's unique about we, what we do is that even when we are focusing on a particular uh, group of practitioners or, or professions, we, we always bring that diversity to the conversation. But the other things that have struck me is that there's increased need, and it came out a little bit at Eurosig this this year. Um, I'm a you know Eurosig is my my inspiration um, about the social impact of the internet. I feel there's more a, a demand now to to not just learn how internet governs governance operates and who's involved in internet governance, but to have a deeper understanding of how do we as an internet community respond to some of the social impact issues. So looking at, at misinformation, looking at education, looking at democracy, at political processes, looking at the media and, and how the media environment is affected. And I find this very challenging, you know, because it kind of is crossing over out of the narrow internet governance and maybe even out of the broad definition, Wolfgang, but I think it's interesting to do that and to, to think about it. And the other thing I think that, that we might want to think about is, is sometimes taking the same cohort of people and doing a follow-up. So, you know, doing like a Eurosic or Afrosic, I can't speak for the South School, sorry, but, but having a group of people like that and then having maybe the same people um, rather than having a new group every year so that you actually deepen the engagement. Um, I don't know if we have the capacity to do that, but it is something that has occurred to me that might be quite a, a useful thing to do. I do think we need to evolve. You like to Thank you, and uh, we, we do have uh, we do have uh, fellows that uh, come to several schools, and and that's very interesting because they 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 evolve with with the group. Not all of them. Uh, we this year we had 400, uh, 200 in on site, and 200 virtual. And and a group of them are, are coming to several schools, which is extremely interesting because they, they have seen the evolution. And some of them become speakers uh, in the experts or, or, or they become, uh, they, they start to work in companies or, or in governments and they, they become experts in, in the next uh, editions. Um, do we have, uh, we have some we names have here, yeah, but I don't know if they are. Muriel Alapin. Yeah, would you like to make a, your name is listed here as one of the short intervention. Can you make a short intervention about the Benin? Yeah, yeah, you're, you're I think you're okay. Thank you. This is Ben Rashad Sanusi from Benin. Can I go in French? Uh, yes, I, I can. <laughs> Yeah, but maybe well I can if also. We have someone that can do. You know uh, what if I've if learned is slowly, called consecutive I, I translation. But you have to be really slow because my French is right. Is but is no, we would need somebody mind. to translate. He would speak a couple lines and then someone. So if we have someone that volunteers uh, as I being I good enough I to do, do it, okay. If he, if I you can do it. You can do it slowly. Okay. I will do it in English. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> 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 I was wanted to try my French. Okay. <laughs> okay. This is Ben Rashad Sanusi. Uh, from Internet Society Benin chapter. So we also organized the School of Internet Governance last September. It was uh, from September f uh, 11 to 15th September. So it was five day training. So we have uh, some participants from Benin, from Togo, 
from Côte d'Ivoire and also from Chad. So there were about uh, 32 people who were trained. So we, during the five days, they have many sessions and many training as well. So it was really amazing because the Francophone region were engaged. They learn a lot about internet governance, how they can be engaged. And now uh, some of the fellow are here on site also attending the IGF, like me. Thank you. Thanks to you. Thank you very much. Bravo. Applauso. Uh, we have Andrietta uh, Abdelaji. Oh, sorry. Ab Ab How do you pronounce it? Oh, that's difficult for me. Abdelaji. Yes. Hi again. It's Abdeljelil Bashar uh, from Chad. So I'm coordinating the National School of Internet Governance. National, it's not national, but it's School of Internet Governance. So we founded in uh, 2019. We founded by House of Africa. And the main objective is to bring, as you know, charging ICT student use digital professional uh, closer to the global internet ecosystem. Because what you saw that there's no many Chadian, it can be in ICA, it can be in IGF and other ecosystems in ITU. So main objective also to fill the gap, as I said, observed during the year in terms of effective participation of Chadian and the policy development process related to internal governance, national, regional, the international ecosystems. The first edition we organize in partnership. So a civil society partnership with, uh, with government is a national ICT agency called ADETIC. So organized with them. So for 14 to 15 December uh, 2020, it was in Yemena. So we bring uh, people from outside also. There's Sebastian from France, Tijani Benjama from uh, Tunisia. There's Estelle from Cameroon also. And there's some people in ICANN also, Yaoli. We did uh, intervention online and some people from Afrinit also. So it is the first time that we organize this kind of schooling chat very appreciated, political side also. Uh, the minister congratulated us, it's the first time that we teach people from this sector and no sector also. So in this year, so we have, uh, uh, yes, 15 participants from uh, 35 entities, can be ministry, parliamentary, civil society, youth, etc. So this year also we will organize our second edition. It, uh, it will be from 60 to to 8 December, so it will be in Yemen also. So you need your support, your contribution also. It can be online, it can be uh, uh, to coach the people also because it's very important for us. So I need to stop there, thank you so much. Thank you, thank yeah. you very much. I will do it in translating French also. Yeah, sure. I Sorry, I, I suggest this is a comment from Abdullah Kamar, who is an alumnus of uh, PKSIG and APSIG. I suggest the inclusion of children aged 10 to 18 in emerging STEM education programs. STEM, of course, is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Within the frame framework of internet governance, it is a forward thinking and crucial step towards achieving SDGs. By providing them with early exposure to STEM disciplines in the context of internet governance, we can foster a generation of digitally literate, responsible, and socially conscious individuals. Furthermore, teaching internet governance principles to young minds can instill values of online safety, digital ethics, and respect for human rights in the digital sphere, aligning with several SDGs that emphasize inclusivity, peace, and justice. Is that a question or a comment? A comment. Okay. I would like to comment on that. In the Argentina School of Internet Governance, we do have a lot of uh, high school students attending the school, especially high school students of their last year, uh, where wh they are mainly technical schools. And some of them are quite engaged after that and uh, interested in, in, in following IT careers and, and following also uh, online discussions about different issues about internet governance. Not in the global one. Um, we have young people. We don't have age limits, but not, not I don't remember we had uh, high school students, but mainly they are mainly young professionals. But in the Argentina one, yes, we, we had uh, a lot of uh, high school students, which I think it was very interesting. 
Yeah, we have uh, something called the youth India Youth IGF, which also covers young people, not in the school but above school. Uh, so I think the floor is now open for yes. any comments. Other from comments? Anyone. Yeah. Are we? Yeah. I'd, I'd Thanks. I'd like to make a comment that's it within this theme, but more about the Dynamic Coalition itself and its role in, in doing that. I don't organize a school. I just go to a bunch of them. Um, and one of the things is the Dynamic Coalition and its usefulness both in having the schools communicate to each other, having the schools learn from each other, and also doing the multi-stakeholder model. One of the things, for example, we try to a moderate degree of success and failure, we mix it both ways, is to have the dynamic coalition be extremely bottom up. And, and basically sort of always, I don't know if you guys notice, that, that follow it, constantly begging people to say something, to do something. And where the dynamic coalition started, it wrote documents, it, it, it you know, produced materials that hopefully could be useful to schools. And it may be the kind of thing that would be useful to look at again, whether there's something, for example, in the notion of the multi-stakeholder model, how it's seen, how it works, that would produce things that, that could sort of help the schools themselves sort of bootstrap programs in that. The dynamic, co the dynamic coalition cannot obviously force any kind of learning on anybody or any kind of curriculum, but certainly as a way to make these things available to the other schools. And so I'm just sort of wondering whether that makes sense to people that there is a help in the dynamic and, and can we use it more for the schools? What would the schools want from a dynamic coalition to help them in teaching governance and understanding the, 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 you know, the multi-stakeholder model and the evolution of the model. And those are just the kind of things I was thinking about that, you know, I don't do a school, but I do dynamic coalitions. Uh, and I teach in schools. Um, in, in the website where we have the map, I think we, we have the possibility of sharing information, documents. Um, oh. oh, yeah, that's, uh, that, that should be. Yeah, that's right, perhaps. Uh, that that should be interesting for us to remember, even myself, <laughs> because sometimes right. I forget. Oh, <laughs> yeah, we have a wiki space where any yeah, school yeah. that wants to, cr and some have, yeah. for example, yeah. uh, you know, the North American school, Glenn, has been amazing yeah. in terms of co co contributing pieces of curricula and, and okay. others, and it's open for anybody to be able to do that. Yeah, let me see if I can bring yeah, that up for example, while we, we have keep talking. That, that document in three languages about the for the Global Digital Compact, we are working now on a different document about multi-stakeholder model. Those uh, and other things that we all may have, that it's a, a good space to share because we have the map, we can see the, the whole uh, map of all the schools and, and maybe others can consult and, and share information. Uh, honestly, I it's, it's, it's lack of time, it's not lack of interest. <laughs> I, I usually forget. <laughs> because a part of this I have to work. <laughs> this, is not <laughs> this is not my work. Just a quick question for Avery. Um, sorry, Martin, um, it is lack of time. Avery, um, what happened with the collaboration between the DC and the IGF secretariat yeah. on the I IGF capacity uh, yeah, building? Yeah. That was uh, last year? <coughs> that was basically a one-time thing where they took the document that we had spent several years developing and produced there. And I guess you were, were you secretary or you, were you chair at the time? I don't remember. But basically, and produced a, a, a document of their own that I haven't followed up to see how it gets distributed, whether it gets distributed, whether there's been any feedback on it and said, gee, nice document, but it would be great to have X, Y, and Z added to it. I have not followed up, and that might be a good thing to do in the next year is follow up with the secretary and say, did you use this? Did, did How many schools came and got it? How many schools tried to use it? How many schools found it useful? How many schools didn't find it useful and why? So it's a good idea as a thing to, to follow up on.
Martin. Yes, thanks, Martin Bottomman. Uh, amongst things I also support, indeed, as uh, uh, was said beforehand by you, uh, that uh, the Global Forum for Cyber Expertise. And there we have a track on Triple uh, I on enhancing justified trust of the internet and email in the region by use of modern internet standards and global good practice. Now, if you go to GFCE Triple I, you'll find there is a handbook that uh, explains these modern internet standards and why they matter. And they also relate to some of the global uh, good practices that you could refer to. So maybe this is also a resource that could end up on this page as a, uh, page as a possible research resource for, for, for schools. Basically, to teach it, you only need one person who understands the issues good enough to explain it because the material is there. So, thank yeah. you. Can, can you repeat the website? GFCE for Global Forum for Cyber yeah. Expertise. Uh, and then Triple I. If you Google for that, you'll find it. Okay. By the way, the Global Forum for Cyber Expertise, which came out from uh, the so called London process, uh, uh, which started the UK government 15 years ago, will have a world conference on capacity building end of November in Ghana, so in Africa. And I think this is probably a good opportunity for our African colleagues, you know, to link to this. So uh, the, the Global Forum on the Cyber Expertise had its root in the issue of cybersecurity. This was also the main target of the so-called London process to concentrate on cybersecurity, less on the broader uh, internet related issues so but cybersecurity is such a central thing and I would recommend in particular our African friends you know to make use of this opportunity in Ghana yes and, and yeah so it's it's GC 3b to, to, to Google on uh, you need to get an invite <laughs> Thanks, Martin. I think uh, for us, it's been very useful. We have been running these uh, workshops, the fourth one we just completed, and it's been very useful, and it has even put us on a path towards an action item, a new project. So uh, I have two comments on them. Uh, I'll read them out. Both are from uh, Keiko Tanaka. Uh, the first comment relates to the, uh, the children. On the previous comment, dynamic teen coalition may be the place to go for focus on, tweens, uh, on teens. It's a new effort. Question, any chances of opening up education resources or youth MOOC or OER? I don't know what OER is. I think it is online education resources. Oh, okay. Okay. Does, uh, do you want to respond to this question? Oh, you are sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, does anybody want to respond to this? I think that is really, uh, it's really good that you are raising that. And I think UNESCO is actually reinvigorating a bit their Open Educational Resources Program. But I don't see it coming to the IGF. And it's not really coming to the IGF. So I think it's actually important. There's also some MOOCs that have been established. So um, in Africa, there's a, a MOOC on Internet Governance Training for Journalists that uh, was actually developed with some, also some support from, from UNESCO. If anyone's interested, I, I can't remember it right now. But I think that the thing about if we were to work on online educational resources, open, open educational resources, we would have to standardize. And I think that's the challenge, because with open educational resources, it kind of works if you use standardized um, templates and formats. Otherwise, you just have a repository. And in a way, the dynamic coalition already gives us that space for, for the repository. But it's a good conversation to start. If I can, I, I'm oh, trying to share the, the website, and I don't know whether it's something that, it's yeah, okay. It's come, it's come. So, okay, it, it's up now. And, and I can go through it a little if people want in just a, a, f a few minutes. So there is a website that, that, that has been maintained. It, you know, basically there's, there's mailing lists and archive. There's about DC meetings. There's the schools on IG. I think that's the one that may have the map. Yep, there's, there's the map. And so basically, each of the schools is, is offered, is requested 
obviously. It's up to each of the schools whether they want to, but basically there's a form that you fill out and you get your school, you know, with a, with, with a marker on the, you know, on, on the map. And then, you know, you click on it and you get the, the, the name of the school and, and some information. So that's good. There's, there's, a, there's a fellow section where fellows who basically want to put themselves in a list of fellows so that they can be found by others. They could perhaps be reached out to as possible teachers, et, et cetera. You know, if you're looking for a teacher for your school, you know, especially remote, unless, you know, then it's a place to go and sort of say, oh, okay, this person was a fellow, et cetera. Um, faculty, some of the faculties list each other. I don't know how many of us have listed each other, but we can. And at that point, others can find pieces of faculty, pieces of faculty, members of faculty, not pieces of faculty. <laughs> Somebody should teach me how to talk. Um, then we have a, a DC uh, SIG wiki that lists a lot of schools and has any of the schools sort of listing when they are, when, when they were formed. Um, there's current work. There's uh, a place, um, let me see, where you can basically put, um, I'm looking for, I, I didn't, not for the form, no, okay. Then there's materials, it's still only one school that's done it, but there's the materials provided by schools participating in the D. So any of you that are like really proud of your curriculum, really proud of a course you put together, really proud of whatever it is about your school you're really proud of that you're willing to make public and available to the other schools, you've got it. So the North American School here, you know, basically provides a whole set of individual provided material, operations manual, introduction, plan, recruitment. So there is already a rich collection of information there it could be so much richer, it's purely a voluntary effort, but it could be so much richer if those of you that want what your school does to be visible and usable by others, you took advantage of it. Since Afri is mentioning the Webby, the, the Webby and the Vic said. <laughs> the, the wiki and the website. Um, it's up for a while already, and I find it a bit sad that not really uh, many made have made use of the wiki because I think it would be a great source for a global network of faculty, of fellows, of schools, of exchanging material, etc. The point is, and I'm saying that here on the record on purpose because it's getting <laughs> difficult meanwhile, the wiki and the website and Afri's work is only supported by our association who is organizing the Euro SSIG, which is Medienstadt Leipzig e.V. So if anyone here in the room, any school or any other organization have some leftover budgets to support our work, that would really help to uh, engage more into the uh, dynamic coalition because doing it on voluntary work is one thing, and everyone who is contributing to the Dynamic Coalition is contributing on a voluntary basis already. But at least a secretariat and the uh, digital sources that we all need to work with, they need to be funded. And at the moment, Medienstadt Leipzig, the Euro SSIG, is the only source of funding. So we are taking it basically from our Euro SSIG budget. I could believe that most or many of the school could dedicate a little bit of it doesn't need to be big money. I think if uh, everyone contributes a little money, that would really help to maintain these resources and also to help the dynamic coalition to move forward. That I needed to say that, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. So we Thank have one hand up there. Yes. Hi, um, two things, uh, I just want one is a question, one is a comment. The first question is, has there b been um, an effort or an initiative or a talk about having a uh, world school on internet governance or a global school on internet governance. I know there are regional, there are national. This network has expand, expanded so much over the last years that um, maybe now there is a time with all of us could pool in resources and look at something like organizing a global school on internet governance or something like that. We are at the IGF. This is a global forum for discussion on IG. 
uh, but over here we are th this this room is the room which develops capacities for, for for internet leaders to come over here and to talk about these issues but what about our own forum i know this dcseg is here and you know we organize a session every year at the igf but if we cannot pull in resources to organize a global school can we leverage this particular dc uh, maybe organize it organize more events around this maybe have quarterly calls where each with the schools who are interested could share what they did um, just to you know have more collaboration within the six um, rather than having let's say one meeting per year where we come down for one and a half hour talk to each other this is so inspiring honestly um, coming from Pakistan and seeing that how other schools are doing it uh, and since this network is growing I think this is an opportunity to actually leverage this potential um, and probably make something which is uh, which is global or at least cooperative within the six. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Vakas. I think uh, global schools, there are uh, there are two people sitting on either side. This is the first one, this is the second one. Both of them have become from regional to global. So there are these things already in place. Uh, now, the discussions in here in the DC are at the meta level where we don't work at uh, uh, internet governance, but uh, we talk about things associated with it, how to run the school, what are the you know, constraints, what is the evolution, and so on. So we have to probably you know, think about uh, this kind of proposal that you have put up. Uh, one other thing I want to mention is that uh, in terms of evolution, uh, the India School has put all their content from the first edition to the eighth edition on the website. So it's very interesting to look at the 2016 course content and then the later ones and see the where it has taken us. So there is actually a very clear journey that has happened in terms of the course content on these eight years. We have five, five minutes more. Are there any uh, burning questions? I from would anybody? like to make a comment. Yeah. Uh, all the content that, that the school uh, has is published in our YouTube channel in two or three languages. So after each school, our team um, divides each of the panels or keynotes in, into different videos with, uh, with a clear sign who's talking and, and the issue and the languages. So all that content is available. And also one good experience that we had since almost the beginning is that uh, we, we, with all the group of students, we create um, a telegram group that it's active uh, since the school and, and it doesn't stop. And uh, some of uh, members of our team are feeding all the time um, um, different fellowship opportunities, working opportunities, research, uh, news about uh, internet governance. So that, that has uh, been working very well and keep on the momentum in between the groups of students. Uh, thanks. I think we have to now uh, think of winding up. So Abri, would you like to make any closing statement? Um, not really. I mean, uh, I invite, I don't know if our rapporteur wishes to, to make a quick summary statement that was listed on the agenda, but you don't have to unless you feel comfortable. But um, because what we do have to produce is we'll have to produce a statement or two that comes out of here. And if you have such a statement That'd that you can great. give to the group, <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> Hello. Bonjour. <laughs> Bonjour à tous. Oh, vous allez m'excuser, je vais parler en français hey. pour la diversité linguistique parce que nous sommes en dernière réunion. Comment? I, I can translate. Non, non, If non. you speak slowly, I can translate. Oui, parce que nous sommes en... Oh, C'est l'IGF. Tous les pays sont regroupés ici. Je peux parler en anglais, mais mon anglais n'est pas trop ça. Je préfère parler en français. Okay. He was speaking pays. French because his English is not oui, so parce que dans mon pays, la Côte d'Ivoire, nous, on s'exprime en, en français. Moi, j'aimerais m'exprimer en français pour être plus à l'aise. Alors, je me nomme en Fanny Saliou. Je suis le coordonnateur pays de, du Forum sur la gouvernance de l'Internet. Nous profitons de cette occasion pour vous informer que la Côte d'Ivoire organise son, son première école sur la gouvernance de l'Internet qui va se dérouler dans le mois de... He's from Côte d'Ivoire, and you're organizing a first IGF? Uh, no, school. School, school. school of Internet Governance. Sorry, my, my French is limited. We nous avons eu l'opportunité cette année pour organiser, pour abriter le Forum Ouest-Africain. 
So they are, they are going to open the West African Forum? Oui, la Côte d'Ivoire qui a eu l'occasion d'abriter cette année chez nous. Donc, uh, so you're, you're hosting the, 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 uh, the West African IGF yeah. this year. Yeah. Donc suite à cela, on voulait organiser l'école. Malheureusement, le programme ne nous est pas permis. Donc uh, on a décidé d'organiser dans le mois de décembre. Dans le mois de décembre. Donc on a besoin de votre soutien pour voir dans quel cadre, comment vous pourrez nous aider dans ce sens même si ce n'est pas à côté financier, mais pouvoir avec des experts dans le domaine pour pouvoir euh, amener tout le monde à adhérer à l'école, tel que les parlementaires, la jeunesse. Donc, so je vous remercie. You both helped me. I, that, that was too much for me. So, Fanny is from Côte d'Ivoire. They organize the first uh, school of internal governance in December. So, they need to bring all the people together. So, they need the support of this. All the people here, it can be a speaker. It can be financial, it can be uh, human resources. So what he need to, to, to tell us here. Thank so you. he's very happy to be here. Thank yeah. you, thank you so much. Uh, okay. So me too, my English is very new. Uh, so at, at some time I was lost in with my uh, translator in, the in my head. So I have a few uh, takeaways that I, I, I pick and uh, write it down. Hello, oh, excuse me. So, um, we yeah, uh, as the, the, the topics was the um, SIG and the SDGs, I noticed that for the SDG 5 on gender, um, Ms. Sandra from Eurosig uh, share with us the, mm -mm. the work that uh, SIG doing to have an inclusive and um, have a very thematic or topics uh, about these SIGs. From the, for the CIG, CDG7 um, on access to energy, Ms. Olga uh, explained that uh, access to energy and uh, uh, climate change have a, a great link. So in her SIG, they have a few panels discussing on this topic. Uh, and his impact of the consume of energy. So excuse me if I made some mistakes. I will put it down uh, later. Um, Mr. Alexander from Russia 6 speaks about um, SDG um, on peace and justice and say that the six can help build um, new standards, help enforce the multi scholars process like in ICON and also enforces inclusion and effectiveness. Um, from the SDG5, uh, Ms. Henriette from Afrizik um, thought about the, um, the new uh, era of Afrizik, who, which is uh, leadership development. And she said that this year they have a lot of parliament who, come, uh, who came to um, Enforce, yeah, their um, knowledge about uh, um, internet governance, and uh, many of these fellows are here to discuss with the parliament track. Um, yeah, and I stop that. Mm? Oui, oui, oui. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. So. Final words. I mean, I think we we have to use the wiki more. Can you can you re remind us the, the URL? URL? So we have that. Igschools.net. Igschools.net. Go to igschools.net, and we should contribute more. I I don't. I, it's always the time issue. It's not lack of volunteering, but it's it's la it's time issue. Apart from the school, I do have to work. Which <laughs> this is kind of a hobby. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so thanks to everybody who who've come to the session <laughs> online as much. well as physically here. It is a very great session. Uh, so we are now looking forward to working closer with the DC. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, everyone. Bye bye.